Okay, there's a fact from rotational dynamics that the torque exerted by gravity on an extended rigid body is exactly the same as you would get from concentrating all the gravitational force at the center of mass. So we're going to pretend the mass is actually a point mass located at its own center of mass. It turns out to give you the correct torque exerted by gravity. So the proof of that is not simple, but we're going to take it as an assumption in this problem. So I have a rod of mass 10 kilograms. I'm going to go ahead and write it in here where I'm computing mg. And what I do is pretend the entire 10 kilograms is located at the center of mass, which is just the geometric center of this object. So I have 10 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, and it gives me 98 newtons of force. So if you want the torque exerted by gravity, you attach a 98 newton force vector to the center of this rod. That means the lever arm for this problem is like this. And we normally call that R. And the force of gravity is already perpendicular to the lever arm, so I don't even have to worry about the sine theta in the torque formula. And I think we're ready to go. So the initial torque exerted by gravity on the rod, I have 98 newtons. It's already perpendicular to a lever arm whose length is 1.25 meters. So there's my torque. And keeping three significant digits, I get 123 newton meters out of that. All right, in part B, we're given the moment of inertia for the rod as one-third ml squared. And again, you can just look these formulas up when you need them, but they do come from integral calculus if you're curious to look into it. So I have the moment of inertia formula, and I have the total torque. Well, that allows me to get the initial angular acceleration. And I want to point out here, as the rod starts to fall and rotate along that hinge, gravity isn't going to be lined up perpendicular to the lever arm anymore. So this acceleration is a constantly changing quantity, and that's why I had to say initial. This only counts for the first moment. So let's get the moment of inertia calculated. That's one-third times the mass of this entire thing, which was 10 kilograms, times the length of it squared, so 2.5 meters all squared. And when I calculate that, I get 20.8 kilogram meters squared. Okay, and then I'm going to apply the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law. So this is like a rotational F equals MA, torque equals I times alpha. And I'm solving for alpha here. And it's going to be torque over the moment of inertia. And my torque was 123 Newton meters. And my moment of inertia was 20.8 kilogram meters squared. And I can get my angular acceleration. Again, this is only true for the first instant because as the rod begins to rotate, the alignment between the force of gravity and the lever arm will change. And I get 5.91 radians per second squared out of this.